science people. Today I want to talk to you about the phyla Nidaria. That's right, silent C, Nidaria. Some examples of Nidarians are sea jellies, also known as jellyfish, sea anemones, and coral. One of the defining characteristics of a Nidarian is a nidocyte. A nidocyte is a stinging cell. So all Nidarians have nidocytes, stinging cells, found on their tentacles. And so this is what sea jellies are stinging you with. This is what sea anemones are stinging you with. This is what coral are stinging you with. And now some of you might think, well, wait, I've been to an aquarium and I've stuck my finger inside a sea anemone and it didn't sting me. Well, that's because some Nidarians, their nidocytes are not strong enough to puncture human skin. And then other Nidarians, like jellyfish, theirs can, and it hurts a lot. And so next time you're at an aquarium, I want you to pay attention. When you're touching a sea anemone and you're like, oh look, its tentacles feel kind of like sandpaper. What's really happening is it's trying to murder you. It's like, ah, I kill you, but it's not strong enough to get through your skin. Within the stinging cell, the nidocyte, there's a little harpoon called a pneumatocyst. The pneumatocyst fires automatically whenever you touch a nidarian. And so the nidarians have no control over this. You touch the nidocyte and the pneumatocyst fires into your skin, injecting venom. Now, as I said before, some of these pneumatocysts are not strong enough to puncture your skin and others are. And that's why some of these nidarians are incredibly dangerous, like the box jelly. The box jelly can kill a human if you're stung by it. Let's talk about a few of the defining characteristics of the phyla nidaria. So nidarians are what we call radial symmetry. It means that they are round. It means that if you were to cut them from the top, it doesn't matter which direction you cut them, you are cutting them in half. So they have radial symmetry. Unlike myself, who has bilateral symmetry, if you cut me in half this way, I have one of everything on both sides for the most part. So I am bilateral. But if you look at Nidarians, they have radial symmetry. So they are round. There is no front or back. They are round, radial symmetry. They are also diploblastic, meaning that they only have two tissue layers. <laughs> Silly jellyfish, I have three tissue layers. Nidarians come in two body forms. We have the medusa and we have the polyp. Medusa, polyp. Medusa, polyp. The medusa is a swimming form. This is how you see adult sea jellies and jellyfish. The polyp is usually sessile. It's usually attached to something like sea anemones and coral. Nidarians have no brain. Instead, they have what we call a nerve net. It is a ring of nerves that can sense the environment around them but no brain, just reflexes based on stimuli. So if you poke them, they go the other way. If they see light, they move towards it or away from it, depending on the species. And so they can't make choices. They're just responding to signals in their nerves. Probably one of the most fascinating things about Nidarians is their complex life cycle. So if we look at the life cycle of a sea jelly, they start off as a planula larvae. This planula larvae is plankton. It just drifts around until it lands somewhere. Once it lands somewhere, it grows into a polyp. That polyp then starts becoming what we call a strobula. The strobula is a polyp that is cloning itself. It is making new versions of itself. Once it has created a long enough strobula, those individual clones pop off as a phyra. And a phyra is like a juvenile jellyfish. The ephyra then turn into the adult reproductive form of the sea jelly, and we call that a medusa. We have a few different nidarian classes within the phyla nidaria. We have hydrozoa. This is the class of the hydras. We have cyphozoa. This is the class of the common sea jellies. We have starozoa. Starozoa are these beautiful polyps that are found in the ocean that don't have a medusa form. We have cubozoa. These are the cube-shaped sea jellies. This is the class that the infamous box jelly is in. And then we have the class anthozoa. Anthozoa are the sea anemones and corals that have a permanent polyp shape and never have a medusa shape. For my marine biology class, we're only going to focus on the class cyphozoa and anthozoa. So you need to remember cyphozoa and anthozoa. Cyphozoa is the common sea jellies and anthozoa is the sea anemones and the coral. 
All right, so let's end by talking about a Nadarian fun fact. So there's a myth out there that if you get stung by a sea jelly, you're supposed to urinate on it or get someone else to. I wouldn't do that. It doesn't help and it doesn't smell good. What does help is vinegar. The acidic reaction of vinegar helps neutralize the burning feeling of the sea jelly sting. I was swimming in Costa Rica one time and I got stung by a sea jelly. I hobbled onto the beach. I walked up to a hamburger stand. I asked them, can I have a little cup of vinegar? I poured it on the jellyfish sting and right away the burning sensation went away. You also want to rinse the sting with seawater. Seawater will prevent the nematocyst from continually injecting the venom. And so washing it with seawater and vinegar will help you. Don't go pee pee on it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed talking about the phyla nidaria, and I will see you next time.